Hi, welcome to the latest episode of the High Five Nonprofit Marketing Ideas. I'm Julie McDowell, Marketing Strategist for Five Wants. The High Five is my video series of marketing strategies and tactics for nonprofits and associations. And today I'm talking about stock photography and how you can use it on your website and beyond. A picture is worth a thousand words. It's not one of the most quotable phrases for nothing. It's because it's true, especially these days. In our pixelated world, we spend 50 to 75% of our day consuming media. At some point, we go into overload mode. Stop reading and just look at pictures. It reminds me of library visits in elementary school. While free to roam, we'd flip through encyclopedias. Yes, the big hefty books with slick pages and gold leaf edges that had millions of words. But it was much more fun to flip through and look at the pictures. There were just too many letters on the pages. In the marketer's realm, photos have the ability to help your brand rise to the top or, at its worst, make your brand simply look unattractive. Whether you're creating a website, landing page, email newsletter, or social media post, there is always a spot for an image. Probably because tweets with images receive 35% more retweets. Facebook posts with a photo see a 37% increase in engagement, and in general, posts with images have 2.3 times more engagement. Basically, people like images to accompany the text, draws them in, and then you can hit them with the copy or call to action. But custom photography is expensive. It's not always feasible or practical to hire a photographer to create an image for one tweet or one email. This is where stock photography can come in handy. If you're not familiar, stock photography is a bank of photos that users can access, typically for a fee with different rights attached to them. Sites like Shutterstock, iStock, and Getty are good examples. Here are five do's and don'ts when it comes to using stock photography for your nonprofit or association. One, do use lesser known stock photography sites. While I mentioned the big names of stock photography just a second ago, those are not the only stock photography sites out there. To find less used, more authentic images and to support smaller photographers, search sites like Unsplash, Pexels, Pixabay, Stockvot, and PicWizard first. Better yet, all of the images there are free and are be able to used anywhere, but make sure you give attribution. Two, don't use them on social media. Let's go ahead and add advertising to this list too. Using stock imagery for social media and ads isn't the best idea. For both social media posts and ads, the image is usually the star of the show. It's the thing that people see first that they, for better or worse, judge you on right away. So in those situations, avoid using your classic stock photos. Instead, embrace the trend of posting raw, unfiltered images instead of the posted ones you'll see on many stock websites. However, if you are in a bind and need to use stock, I highly recommend going to the lesser known sites I mentioned in number one. Number three, do fill in holes from custom shoots with stock images. At some point or another, invest in a custom photography shoot. This could be tied to an event or a campaign or when you have free time and extra budget. Hmm. Make the most of this time with a photographer and capture images that are versatile, evergreen, and unique to your nonprofit or association. Before hiring a photographer, peruse stock photography sites to see what's available and what you think you could use. Then be sure to have your photographer you hire avoid taking similar shots. That way you can use stock photos to fill in these holes and maximize the photographer's time. Four, don't use images you've seen elsewhere. We all know these images. They're the ones you've seen time and time again on clickbait stories, Facebook ads, and the list goes on. While searching stock image sites, you're bound to come across the same photo or one from the same shoot. Steer clear. You don't want someone visiting your site or social media and wondering where they've seen that very posed person before. If in doubt, do a Google image search to see what pops up. 
Number five, do understand the photo's license. There are many different types of image licenses. The broadest is the free use license, which is exactly what it sounds like. You can use the image however you want. Then there are licenses for editorial use, commercial use, promotional use, and more. These licenses are nuanced, but their names are pretty self-explanatory. Some licenses are also only for one-time use. It's important to read up on the licenses the photos you'd like to download and use have so you can use it correctly and avoid any issues. And just a note, when you're using your own photography, get a release to ensure that you and they are aware of the places where you may want to use it and when permission runs out, if ever. Thanks for joining me for today's High Five Nonprofit Marketing Ideas. I hope you learned a little more about how to use photos effectively. And remember, don't be afraid to get in front of the camera yourself. Donors love putting faces to names. Have a stock photography question for your nonprofit? Email me at julia at fiveones.com or leave a comment below. Thanks and see you again next time.